Hey guys, it's Dasha. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to October's round of A Game of Tones. If you are new here, this is my TBR game. I play this every month and I basically roll the dice, move across the board and see what I'm reading each month. I will have a playlist linked down below and right up here in case you want to get caught up with all the rules. But if you're not new, Let's see how last month went and then let's do the rolls for October. So I have a little stack right here. This is not all the books on the TBR obviously, but I will go through every single one and whether I completed it or not. I started with a punishment because I did not complete August's TBR. I had to pick a Raven card for a punishment and it told me to pick a battle card. A friend had to pick a book that they loved and I basically had to see whether I liked it or didn't like it and the results of that will be happening later of course but Ray had picked Ray Bearer for me and I did read the book. I also had Sir Gregor's card. I had to read a book with bone or blood in the title or on the cover so I read Bad Blood by John Carreru. I did complete the book. I had another Raven card. I had to read a book with an ugly cover so I read Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shauna McGuire and I did obviously read that book. Very short one. I got Sir Jamie's card as well. I had to read a book featuring a morally gray character so I had picked Red Seas Under Red Skies. At the time that I'm filming, I'm not done this book, but I did start it, so I'm counting it. I had landed on House Tully, which got me the prompt to read a new release. I picked Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse for this, and I did read this book. Finally, I got the Tower of the Hand prompt. I had to read a thrifted book. For this prompt, I had picked The Shadowed Sun by N.K. Jemisin. It's in a bind up here of the two books in the duology uh, that is thrifted. Unfortunately, I did not get around to this this month. I haven't even started it, so this is a failed TBR for September as well. Um, it's not not going great. In terms of reading plans for October, I don't have anything specific like readathons. I do have one buddy read with Ray, so I'm hoping to get that into the TBR. And there's a lot of books that I want to get to, way too many, like more than is reasonable, considering I also have a ton of plans in October. October is my birthday month, and I'm also going to Vegas for a music festival for like four or five days. So I'm gonna be hella incapacitated in terms of reading. But that's not gonna stop me. For making a massive TBR. So let's get right on into the punishment as well as finishing up last month's battle card and then the rolls. All right, so we ended up last on a location space. However, before we can even roll, we have two things to do. So first, I have to pick a punishment since I did not complete my TBR last month. And we got friend picks a book they hated. <laughs> So for a punishment, we got a pretty fun one. I got friend picks a book they hated. So I have messaged Robin. I talk about her a lot, but as always, her channel will be linked. Uh, so I decided to message Robin since Ray picked last month and she is probably working right now. I am filming in the middle of a workday during my lunch. So I will insert clip here whenever she does answer me and that will be on the TBR. So I finally got an answer from Robin. She chose The Magicians by Lev Grossman. Do I know anything about this book? No. However, I do recall a bunch of bad reviews for this book um, by people I trust. <laughs> so I'm not sure how I feel about this choice because sometimes people hate books that a lot of other people love. So it's like, okay, like there's a chance that it might be good, but I've heard a lot of bad reviews about this. So I am really nervous. <laughs> I don't know a single thing about it, so I can't really tell you what it's about. I've heard it compared to like Harry Potter for adults, but a lot worse. I don't know if that's accurate at all. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm reading that in October. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> all right, and so the other thing to do is I had this one last month, friend picks a book they love, and depending how I felt about it, I either move forward or backwards. So Ray had picked Ray Bearer for me, and I actually really did quite enjoy it. So I get to move up four spaces. One, two, three, four, and that will be our starting position for roll number one for October. Four. One, two, three, four. And who do we got? We've got Lady Caitlin. You have courage, not battle courage perhaps, but I don't know, a kind of woman's courage. Read a book with a female main character. Oh, well, that should be easy enough. All right, so our first roll, we have to pick a book with a female main character, which works out pretty well because one of the POVs in Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Shackleborty is a female character. So I'm gonna pick this. This is the second book in the Devabad trilogy. I had read City of Brass 
in September with Ray and we are going to continue with the Kingdom of Copper and I am really really excited honestly. This is an adult fantasy following a couple of characters inside the magical city of Devabad which is a city of Jinn. It's very magical, very enticing. Like I don't want to live in a lot of fantasy worlds but I would live in this one. It's really really cool. I enjoyed the first book quite a bit and I'm really excited to continue and I think it's going to be a perfect pick for October because it is a really really quick read considering I have some more dense books that I want to put on the TBR. I think this is going to be perfect and I'm really excited to continue it with Ray because we've been having such a fun time just talking shit about characters and going in like theories and stuff so I'm really excited to continue. And roll number two, two, one, two, another character card. We have Gilly. Read a book from a series. So for our second role, we got our dear Gilly. And I thought long and hard about this. I'm not gonna lie. This was a struggle because obviously I have a lot of series that I want to finish. However, my little dumb dumb pea brain is telling me that it's not in the mood to finish a series. It is instead in the mood to start the Wheel of Time. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna read The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. <laughs> This is completely unreasonable and not a smart thing to do, but I'm still gonna do it because for some reason this has just been like screaming at me to pick it up. I think because the show is coming out in November and on my Twitter like timeline and even in my YouTube, everyone's talking about this series and I still haven't even read the first book and I'm just like, I want to read it. I don't care if I have series I need to finish. I want to start this one so freaking bad. So I'm gonna start it. Do I know what it's about? Absolutely not. Do I care? Nope. I know that it's a beloved high fantasy series and that's all I need to know to pick it up. I really hope I like them. I have really high hopes for this. I just know that everyone loves this so much and I just, I feel like I will too. I have this beautiful color, full color illustrated map that is just so enticing. I want to find out what all this is about. And like I hear names of characters all the time in places, but I don't know what they're about. So I'm really pumped for this. Again, maybe not the most reasonable choice to take, but I am really stupid excited for this. So fuck it, I'm putting it on my TBR, which means I have to read it now. Rule number three, one. All right, what do we got? Read your most recent purchase. All right, so next we got Marine. I have to pick my most recent purchase and this literally just came in a few days ago. I have Marcus Aurelius's Meditations. So I've been on a weird, I don't wanna call it like a philosophy kick because I've really only read like one book. Um, if you recall, which video was it? I talked a little while ago how I started Hannah Arendt's The Human Condition and I'm still friggin' reading it because it's so dense. So that's kind of irrelevant. I wouldn't really call it a philosophy kick, but I am really enjoying it. So I thought picking up something a little bit shorter, something like really classic would be really good. This is a very short book and it's kind of separated into like little paragraphs. It's not even really like, it doesn't seem that dense and it feels like a really, really good one to pick up during the fall for some reason. I'm not saying it makes sense. I guess maybe because it's like academic. So I feel like it's kind of a fall read, but this was my most recent purchase, if I'm also being honest. So that works for the prompt, but I am also excited for this. I just know that this is kind of, wasn't Marcus Aurelius the Stoic? Oh, he draws on Stoic philosophy. There we go. It's a private notebook of philosophical reflections written by the Roman emperor, probably on military campaign in Germany. Interesting. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say about this. It's a classic and I did say I needed to read more classics. So finally, I'm making good on that promise and I'm going to read this and it's pretty short. So that's also a bonus because we all know that one classic that's still hanging over my head. That's like 1200 pages. We're not going to talk about it, but that's still hanging over my head. So while I finish that at some point, maybe I will be reading this in October. <laughs> Roll number four. Four. Another location card. And we have the Dothraki Sea. Pick a seasonal read. All right, so our next prompt was a really fun one. We got the Dothraki Sea. The prompt is to pick a seasonal read. And of course, it's fall, it's October, it's spooky season. So I'm gonna be reading My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. So this was a pretty recent release. I have read Stephen Graham Jones's The Only Good Indians earlier this year. Absolutely loved it. Probably one of my favorite horror books that I've ever read. So I thought I would pick this up. There was a little sale on 
recent releases at chapters and this was like 20% off or something so I was like yeah you know what I'll pick it up I don't know much about this other than it is supposed to be a kind of love letter to the slasher genre in terms of movies you're following a girl I believe who is like obsessed with slasher movies until her town starts facing a tragedy of its own I'm excited I don't really need to know much more than that I really did enjoy his writing style once I got into it it was a little slow to get into with the only good Indians but I really did enjoy it I have not heard a ton of reviews yet of this. I've heard people be excited for it, but I don't know what the general consensus is. So I am excited to see what his other works have to offer since I enjoyed The Only Good Indian so much. And I'm just, yeah, I think this is gonna be perfect for spooky season. And finally, roll number five. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. And we have got Ooh, Lord Tywin. Some battles are won with swords and spears, others with quills and ravens. Read a book featuring a strong family dynamic or a found family. Our final pick, Goddess Lord Tywin, the prompt is to read a book with a strong family dynamic or found family. So for this, I'm pretty sure this counts. Um, I'm gonna be reading Helter Skelter by who's Vincent Bugliosi and Kurt Gentry. So this is about the Manson family, Manson murders. I actually don't know that much about them. For some reason, when it comes to my true crime knowledge, the Manson murders always kind of escape me. Maybe because I was never as interested in them because they were perpetrated by a group. But the more I think about it, the more interesting that is. I also know that Helter Skelter is like a classic work of true crime nonfiction. So I'm hoping that it lives up to the hype. It's got like Bible pages. It is such a thick book. So I'm kind of scared, but like, I'm really excited. I feel like this is also perfect fall creepy true crime vibes that's what i'm going for in picking this and i'm hoping it lives up to that i like i said like i genuinely don't know that much about the story of the manson murders so i'm hoping this is going to be a really good guide into that and i'm pretty excited like i said i think it fits the fall vibe perfectly and i do need a nonfiction on my tbr officially so this is it and i know that obviously they're called the manson family even though they were not actually a family so i think it works for our prompt Pretty well. All right, and here's the official stack minus two books. We also have Kingdom of Copper and whatever it is that Robin chooses for me to read that she hates. Um, I'm not too afraid of this stack considering it's actually at least evenly spread out. Last time the reason I failed was that there was way too much fantasy and my brain was getting really really kind of tired. So I think this is a much better mix of a little bit of everything and I think it's gonna be a lot easier to get through, hopefully. <laughs> At least hopefully I can complete the actual set TBR, who knows. But of course, that is not all I'd like to get to in October. I have a ton of books that I really, really want to read. I'm in a really weird reading mood where all I want to read is nonfiction and like horror, but mainly nonfiction. So I don't know. I'm not saying it makes any sense. So here are a few more books that I'm hoping to get to. I'll probably get to a few of these, I'm sure. The first of these is Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. So I really want to just finish off this series. I know I could have used it for the series prompt, but if I put this on my TBR and I don't finish it because it's like 800 pages, I'm going to be very upset with myself. So this is like, if I get a chance to start it, if I finish like all the fantasy books on my TBR and I need a new one to pick up, I will pick this up for sure because I really want to finish this series, but I think putting it on the official TBR would be way too stressful. So I really do want to read this. I've been loving this series so much. Robin Hobb is a new favorite author for me. She's absolutely incredible, so I'd love to finish this series and continue on with her works. But this is a massive one, so I can't put it officially. I'm just gonna hope I get to it this month. If not, it'll be on the official TBR in November, probably. I also have Jesus and John Wayne by Kristen Cobiz Dumez. So this is a nonfiction about evangelicalism in the US. And I, first of all, that topic is fascinating. I also got this on recommendation from Mara at Books Like Whoa. She was raised in an evangelical family, so she's kind of very experienced with that, and she really recommended this book. She praised it pretty highly, so I'm excited. I think this topic is so fascinating. I've been watching videos on it recently, and like I want to read more about it because I think that it's so timely, and at the same time, the history of it is like fascinating. So I'm probably gonna actually pick this one up really, really soon. It's not that long and it seems to be like pretty, not academic, I guess. I don't know how else to call it, like casually written. So I'm super hyped for this. Might even start it in the end of September because I'm so excited. Next is one I've talked about recently. So I'm not gonna go in detail, but I have Ring by Koji Suzuki. So I've been meaning to probably pick this one up in September. I didn't get to it, but it is so short that I probably will get to it in between some other books 
in October. Come on, it's horror. It's Japanese horror. It's gonna be so good. I'm excited. Again, it's pretty short, so I can probably pick this up when I'm needing like a palate cleanser from some of my other books. Horror, I usually get through pretty quickly as well, so I'm really pumped for this one. I think right now is the perfect time to read it, so I'm sure I'll get around to it. And finally, this one doesn't make sense, but to me, for some reason, this book screams fall. Uh, a Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara, so I've been meaning to get to this. I started it. If you saw my pile of shame video, this book was on it because I did start it and got like a chunk of the way through, but I was reading it during the holidays, and this was just too depressing for the holidays, but I feel like fall is a good time for this, so I'm hoping to get to it, or at least maybe start it, in October and read it through November and kind of prioritize it. I don't know if it's TikTok influencing me or if it's the weather that's making me miserable and wanting to be even more miserable, but I really want to get back into this book, so I'm gonna try to get to it. It's been calling my name and I don't want to be in a reading slump, so I'm gonna pick up things that call my name. So hopefully I will be able to start this in October and get around to it through the fall because I've been really drawn to it lately for some reason. So there you have it friends. This was my entire TBR for October. I'm not saying I'll stick to it. I'm sure there's other things that might come up or other horror books maybe that will pique my interest, but this is at least the set one, as you saw, for the Game of Tomes and a few other books I'm interested in picking up. If you have read any of these, please let me know what you thought down below. Also, if you stuck around this long, first of all, thank you very much. Second, I have a super, super exciting announcement coming a little bit into the month of October, so stay tuned for that. It is tangentially related to a Game of Tomes, so if you really like this, you might like what's coming. So keep an eye out for that. I will not say more than that. It's coming soon and I hope you guys will really like it. Otherwise, my social media is also linked down there. You guys can come talk to me there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!